We are starting to see a systemic crack in the pre-construction space right now. Now, I've always advocated not buying pre-construction to sell on assignment because it just doesn't make any financial sense. And I've talked about many, many, many times before, because at the end of the day, the realtor who told you to buy the pre-con with you know, low deposits and you sell it for a profit is really the only one making money and likely at your expense. So this is a crappy video that I have to make, but I want to use this kind of as a learning curve, a learning point to illustrate my point so that more people are not going to make this mistake because I've been fielding a lot of calls recently about how to get defensive with everyone's portfolio or what they bought. And most of the time, because of the pre-con and way, the way it's bought and the strategy of selling on like assignment, the only way to you know, play defensive is to liquidate as a loss. So this is a crummy video to make, but if you're a big time real estate bear, I think you're going to get some giggles out of this, maybe. Anyways, for everyone else who thinks they're caught in a sticky situation and are wondering, you know, what kind of defensive strategies you can make, you can book a call with me using a link on the screen. It's right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and a time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and the question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Day Toronto, welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. My name is Zen and I run a Remax brokerage in the greater Toronto area on top of making awesome real estate educational real estate content videos like this for you, right? So like I was saying earlier in my intro, after feeling like a lot of calls in the past few weeks about pre-construction assignments and recently how to kind of get rid of them as of late, you know, our team start looking and monitoring some assignments and it's kind of startling what we see right now. It's a little bit scary and it's kind of like what I've been talking about before. Now, if you have been watching my channel before, you'll know that I'm pretty adamant about not buying a pre-con to sign. I like a sign, like sell it on contract and I made a pretty heated video about it right here. Click on the I. I've also talked about how the pre-con could be potentially the systemic issue in our Toronto real estate market. And if there were be some cracks and like fissures and stuff, it would start in the pre-con space and it is happening already right now. So here are some notable assignments we found. Now there's no particular order, but what I did is I put them in um, like a whole duration, like how long they've had it for and which they're um, trying to sell it for and whether it's a profit, a loss or gain, it'll be green or red somewhere in the corner over here after commissions, assuming 5% in tax. And this is before HST and all the other jazz, right? So when going through this, the last two I actually have there are actually pretty good deals in my opinion. So uh, if you're an investor sitting on cash waiting for an opportunity to jump back in, being able to buy pre-con condos in prime evergreen areas for like 2017, 2018 pre-construction pricing is a pretty good deal. So stay tuned to the end. And if you're interested, you can get on my list by shooting me an email. Uh, email will be right here. So you'll be notified of these deals when we see them right away. All right. So first one, you can see here, this is Mirabella, which is by Humber Bay. It's a five-year hold and they're basically selling it at a loss after five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this is the asking price. And when you get closer and closer to registration, the more and more desperate the sellers are, you know, depending on their circumstances, right? Now, the whole time on these could obviously be shorter than the date I have up here, which was the original platinum launch date. Again, these things are all over the place, but that's just where I'm gonna put it. So if you bought it in a phase after the platinum launch, your hold period could be a little bit shorter, right? And you paid a premium on that unit. However, if you bought it beforehand, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because if you're selling it, you're selling it anyways, right? So for some context of how pre-con assignments work, uh, with most contracts, you have about one or two months before registration, which is when you get a mortgage, final closing to assign it. So the you know occupancy date that you have, I highlighted over here, doesn't necessarily mean it's an imminent financial ruin for these sellers, right? Uh, they could just start paying the occupancy fees, right? Now note, very big note, if you are in the situation if you decide to fill the property with a tenant, it will be that much harder to assign and or sell it because someone is living there, right? Just keep that in mind. Next, you got a second number two here, a low rise property in Brantford selling for about a uh, loss from two years ago. The low rise has hit the toughest because it suffered the most losses in the last little bit. And the build time tends to be a lot faster than a condo, right? So you go like one or two years instead of like five to seven. Also, whoever's buying this property right now may not even get the appraisal since prices have come down a little bit. So if you're looking at stuff like this, do your own due diligence. Number three, 
Another Mirabella, right? So this one is selling for a minor profit at the ask price. Again, five-year hold. Number four, I think this one was the worst one so far from what I can tell, like two and a half year hold at Liberty Market Village, and they're selling for a lot less than what they originally bought it for. If, big if, they get their list, they're out 60,000 for holding a condo for like two and a half years or so. That's a negative return on your investment ROI of like 17%. Yeah, let that sink in, negative 17% brutal the wild thing is that if they sell uh per square foot this is before development charges and the closing costs they're still like 1150 per square foot which is a little bit high for the current market right now which i suspect they may have bought in the subsequent phases a little bit after the launch right now the reason why this is so scary is most of these purchases were not that recent except for like the five-year-old one right and you can only imagine what's going to happen for those who pay like fifteen hundred dollars or sixteen hundred dollars a foot for downtown condo which granted the build time is five years and it may not be a problem until maybe like 2027 or so and it's not that bad but what if you paid eleven hundred dollars per foot for non-core product coming soon that's why i think the 2019 cohort of buyers because of like the development charges doubling that, that duration and prices going up etc etc could be in trouble as those come along in the next few years the messed up thing is that pre-con prices aren't coming down right now because of inflation and the construction costs which means that the replacement cost is absolutely ridiculous on some of these products relative to what they are trading at in the resale market right now this is why I kept saying the way pre-con prices are going and the way people are still buying them to assign is a systemic issue coming down the pipeline for the entire market as a whole. This is exactly why I have to make this video. Again, it's another PSA, right? So we got the next one here, number five, 1181 Queen West. I remember this project because of how ridiculous the angular plane was, um, but selling to break even with a four-year hold because they bought it was like 2018 or so, yeah, it's rough. Now, if you haven't noticed, the underlining theme here in most of these assignments I put up here is that the occupancy is coming up. So when pre-con purchasers start to see that, you know, the, the, what the contract they bought is coming for closing and they originally planned to sign it and the market is not good and they need to get rid of it in a bad market, it's a race to the bottom, depending on how many of those units are available and how good your layout is. Now, this is especially true for those who are holding like multiple pre-cons to flip on assignment. And there are a lot of other reasons that why they're in this position. And I'm not going to go over too much, but here's a kind of snippet of it, right? So you got people who are over levered, HELOCs to buy these things on their personal homes, job changes, can't qualify with the new stress tests and the higher rates. Maybe they just don't want to keep it given how much like, you know, negative news is right there right now with the real estate market and how we're coming up with a historic correction, whatever that means, right, et cetera, et cetera. So regardless, it's hard to speculate about the reason they're under the stress right now, but they do have to move it. And that's kind of where people can swoop these things up and you get that time purchase back from whenever they bought it, right? If you get it at cost. Now, if you found this content useful, it probably means other people will as well. So smash that like button and spread this up with other people you know, or may need to hear this message. And it will help a lot because this is not a lesson that you want to learn from experience from people because like it, it could just basically wreck a lot of people financially, right? And hopefully more and more people will come to see this and realize that pre-con assignment is just a terrible idea. And if you're planning to go to pre-con route, you better be able to close or know what kind of risk you're taking on, right? And this is not the first time I've said this before, but sometimes I find us as human beings, myself included, just we need to see examples to understand, right? So kind of just like what I'm showing you right now or you know, kind of like in school, uh, which sucks because these examples I'm showing you while some of you real estate bears are laughing, could be some people have their financial lives at stake right now, which absolutely sucks, right? Anyways, while you're at this, you know, subscribe to the channel and hopefully if you're concerned of some kind of pre-con that you have or if you're stuck, stuck in a situation and maybe some of these things are scaring you, you can book a strategy call with me using the link right here. It's www.chatwebzen.com. Number six or seven, I lost count. Anyways, it's a Scarborough Town Complex here, two-year hold, trying to break even. It's wild if you look at this right now because you could essentially get a pretty decent detached home in Scarborough right now, like a bungalow, for a million bucks. Granted, you know, the pre-con is fancy and new, but a detached piece of land with no maintenance fee. Yeah. So if you kind of add up the cost of the maintenance fee, you're pretty close to having the same monthly carrying costs after mortgages or mortgages and maintenance fee as a detach in Scarborough at a million bucks. And you really kind of have to value the um, 
newness <laughs> and forego the land value and you know the long play in real estate to want that one next you got e2 which is a great building uh, subway access directly at young and eglinton this is breaking even from five year hold from a while ago this is actually a really good deal about a little bit over a thousand bucks a foot for direct access to the young and egg which has the cross town lrt uh, connecting to it which is a good deal and the last one is another good deal which is rush condos in downtown this is directly across from waterworks a little bit north of king west Different finishes from Waterworks, but the sellers on break even after commissions. I can see from the numbers over there. Same thing, occupancy coming up. This original purchase makes me think they bought it a little bit after what I put launch up there, which is um 2018. But I like 1100 bucks per foot in downtown. That's brand new and not under rent control. By King West is pretty good deal. You know, pretty good deal. Like I was saying, Waterworks across from it is going for like 1300 right now, even with the press market, like good 10 out of 10 condos, picturesque, like I've been saying, that stuff is still going. I've seen some stuff for multiple offers, it's actually moving as well. But you know, different building and there's a little bit of arbitrage there because it's across the street. Now, the last two I just showed you kind of make sense because of the area, they're more like evergreen, more desired areas, they're more likely to kind of hold on to their value, right? People want to go there. And while most of the initial ones in the beginning of the list are really not that great. so. The moral of the story here is be careful when you buy pre-construction as there are obviously risk on the upside. Sorry, no, there is upside for you to make money and there's also risk on the downside, right? So when the market is going up, everybody looks like a genius and you're on closer, keep that in mind. But when it's coming down and you don't know the downside and you haven't capped your downside, which I've talked a lot about before, you are in for some trouble in the coming short term. It's unfortunate, but you're just caught in the situation right now because the market is coming down at a really rapid rate. Yeah. Now, if you like how some of the arbitrage works on these pre-cons or in the last two deals, Rush and E2 that I show in this video, you can book a call to me to let me know kind of what you're looking for. And I can put you on my list of these deals that are coming up for sellers who need to sell. Like it's a legitimate list. I'm like an old school guy. Like I have a notebook that I opened up, right? So if you want to chat with me about that, the link is right here on the screen. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, this one's really good. You know what? Just watch the most.